recognize that music? Life with Dexter. The Commonwealth Bank brings you Life with Dexter. It's our very great pleasure to have Dexter on the phone, Willie Fennell. Welcome to Remember When, Willie. Uh, that's Philip, is it? It's Philip and Bruce. Bruce with you now. Oh, Bruce, Bruce with me now. Yes. Well, wonderful to hear that music. <laughs> uh, I, I listened to 10 years of that, wrote 400 odd episodes of it, and uh, it's still uh, a bit nostalgic when I hear it back. It's. Uh, did you say you wrote them as well, Willie? Oh, yeah, yeah. It comes on the end of each episode, but no one ever notices that on the end. Written, written by Willie Fennell. Yeah, that was my biggest chore. Playing Dexter was nothing, but writing the, the things where I nearly swore there. Writing them was, was a bit more difficult than playing Dexter Dutton. Willie, that may have brought back a few memories, that music. Have a listen to this. It may trigger a few more. Don't look now, but here comes the worry of my life. It's Willie Fennell. How are you, mate? Willie, do you always have to come out here and say, How are you, mate? Have I said that before? Are you kidding? Mr. Birdsness, uh, I wrote a poem what shows the noises what animals make. Uh, would you like to hear it? No. Right, it goes like this. The cow goes moo, the pussy goes meow, the owl goes who, the giraffe goes... Well, finish it. Uh, I finished it. But what about the giraffe? He don't make any noise at all. <laughs> saying you can handle who or what? Oh, I, uh, I was just telling Mum how I can handle our lawnmower. Ah, oh. well, by the look of the front lawn, you'd better start handling it more often. <laughs> oh, I intend to. I'm going to cut that grass this afternoon like it's never been cut before. And after I do that, I'm going to clean out the garage. Hmm. All right, let's have it. Whose window did you smash this time? <laughs> Nobody's window. Well, then what do you want? How much? Well, gee, Dad, I don't dig your double talk. No, but I dig your double trouble talk. <laughs> if you offered to cut one blade of grass, I'd be worried, but when you offer to cut the whole lawn and clean out the garage, I'm more than worried. I'm petrified. <laughs> I don't need any more clues from you to know I'm going to be bitten. <laughs> Your memories there, Willie. Uh, well, look, when you go back that far, <laughs> you should change your program to uh, uh, way, way, way back. <laughs> way back. And we went back with Jack Burgess, it must have been, in uh, Calling the Stars. Uh, yeah, that, he was my greatest friend. Actually, that was the Cashmere Vacay show, which is... Uh, there was Calling the Stars on Tuesday nights and the Cashmere Bouquet by the same sponsor, Colgate Palmolive, on the Wednesday night. That was Cashmere Bouquet show. And I believe that show was recorded at the Collingwood Town Hall. Oh, it may have been, yes, because we went on tour every year from Sydney. Uh, we mainly did our shows in Sydney, but every year we went through Melbourne. Uh, we played all the town halls, uh, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane, and, and you name it. But uh, they were wonderful tours. We had a 60-piece orchestra in those days and uh, a fantastic setup. Uh, the, 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 the ratings were sort of things you don't hear about today. We had a rating of about 68% in those days, and uh, everybody listened, but it, it, it was wonderful. Uh, Willie, was that the Dennis Collinson Orchestra? Yeah, yeah. We had two orchestra leaders. Uh, we had seven musical arrangers. Uh, uh, Montague really uh, conducted the Calling the Stars, and the same orchestra was conducted by Dennis Collinson for the Cashmere Bouquet Show. Let's go back to those days and calling the stars. Who were the stars, Willie? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, singers-wise, I'm talking again to Bruce, am I? Yes, you are. Yes, Bruce. Well, well we had uh, singers uh, Peter Dawson, 
uh, names people will remember today. One of the still one of the biggest record sellers of all time today is Peter Dawson, Strella Wilson, uh, an occasional uh, finale by Gladys Moncrief. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, John Fullard. Uh, and, and pop singers, the Three Shades in Blue, we had Olive Lester, but they're probably names people don't, but they would remember those wonderful singers and comedians, uh, Dick Bentley, uh, Wayne Froman, Al Thomas, jo George Foster. Uh, I'm about the only one of the clan left at the moment. Uh, what about Mo? Uh, did you ever work with Mo, Willie? With Mo for his last three years, because he did about 30 ideas in the theatre. A lot of people think I, I should be uh, gone by now because I work with them all. Uh, but Mo and Davey and even Jack Burgess were in their, their mid to late 40s when I joined Colgate in 45, and I was then 25 playing, How oh, are you, mate, Willie? And it was a little uh, grumpy voice on the air, little husky voice rather, as I have tonight with a bit of a cold. Uh, and people put me in the same era. But actually, uh, I'm, I'm 72 now. I'm, I'm not taking my way out of a, an egg or anything, but uh, I'm not 149 as people think I might be. Or worse, Willie, reports of your death have been much exaggerated. This is Philip again. Yes, did you hear my reply quote in Brisbane? Tell me. Uh, well, they, they, they quoted that and then they opened up with uh, Mark Twain's quote saying the reports on my death are grossly exaggerated, uh, which Mark Twain is noted for, and then added my quote which said, if, if I'm dead the corpse appeared on stage for Marriage of Figaro uh, in, in the QTC theatre last night uh, to a nice little ovation and I expect to give another lively performance tonight and I'm expecting to go back uh, or it expects to go back to Sydney on Monday uh, minus a box. It would have been more appropriate if you'd been the ghost of Hamlet perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was Mo like, Willie? Can you sum him up? Oh, Look, that's a difficult question uh, because I was asked to write the book on Mo. I did the play Young Mo here with Gary McDonald playing Mo and Gloria Dawn and a wonderful lineup. And uh, uh, I played uh, Van der Sluis, which was, you know, Roy's real name, but Gary played Mo himself. I played his grandfather and his father, or two different parts. But, uh, oh, uh, no, I. Can't say a lot about Mo as a person because uh, I didn't get along with him very well at all. But he, he was the only natural comic I've ever known. Why is it that you didn't get along with him? Was he... Uh... Well, he had 30 years in the Tivoli and on in the theatre, and he was used to being... Uh, what they call, a, as the, the Americans call a top banana, always the top comedian in a show. When he came into radio, he had to find his position because people like Bentley and myself and Davey and all of us had had a few years or a couple of years anyway I had in radio and Roy wasn't used to that at all. And what we did, he didn't go very well for the first uh, week or two on radio because he, uh, Roy had this wonderful thing. He'd come on stage and scratch himself or say, hello, everybody, oh, <laughs> hello, and, and get a laugh for one minute. And on air, it, it didn't work because, as you can understand, if you don't put something into that microphone, uh, nothing's happening. But in the theatre it worked, but it didn't work, and uh, he was almost on the outer until we designed. We got together. There was Freddie Parsons, Al Thomas, Alexander McDonald, and myself got together and write, wrote a sketch for him called Macaque Mansions, which he's known mainly for today. And we surrounded him with top people. We surrounded him with uh, uh, Spencer the Garbage Man, Harry Avondale played that, and uh, Jack Burgess played Horrible Irby, Hal Lashwood played uh, uh, Mr. Lasho, and uh, we surrounded him with a lot of people, which he didn't like at all in the beginning, but it worked. And uh, Roy suddenly realized that uh, 
he had to be part of an ensemble and then it worked and then he was great on, on radio for the last two or three years but I didn't do people think I work with him a lot I only ever did one sketch in radio with him uh, and that was a bit fatal because they put Davy and Bentley and, and Mo and myself together and thought four comics will be four times as funny. It was four times as unfunny because it didn't work. Was there a, what a clash of egos, Willie? Oh, well, uh, you see, you uh, with a comedian, he either works by himself or with a straight man like I had with Jack Burgess or Lashwood and it works but you put four people trying to be funny together and, and nobody is funny everybody's trying to outdo one another and, and uh, Mo was not used to this at all and it didn't work Willie it's Bruce again here tell us about Fooey and did Fooey actually create How You Go and oh, How Are You Mate? No, no it was Willie, Willie. Uh, Fooey was the first character I did which was very uh, uh, oh, it was far more English and I used to do things like the, uh, send up on a BBC race commentary uh, good afternoon everybody this is your land the forces are lining up at the barrier they're facing alternate directions uh, I don't know whether that's the face uh, well that's one one facing this way and one facing the other way but they're off or rather I should say they're off they're going along it's rather a small horse leading he's not too small not too large but uh, you might say a sort of medium sized horse it was that type of <laughs> And and uh, I did that for 12 months until Ron Beck, the managing director of Colgate, said, Willie, I think we should get you a more Australian-type, down-to-earth character. And I said, good on you, mate. I reckon that's the right idea. And he said, say that again. I said, all I said was, good on you, mate. That's, he said, that's what we need. Good on you, mate. And that's how How Are You Mate came about. And, and they called him Willie. Uh, which is my actual name, William, anyway. So, uh, no, Fooey was before Willie. What about Life with Dexter? Was that based on an American script, uh, Willie? Well, based on it, yeah, yeah. Excuse my throat, it's a bit shocking at the moment. But, uh, yes, I played Dagwood in the Bondi series using American scripts. And uh, I love playing Dagwood. And after we did about 13 episodes, America got back to us and said the show was syndicated and we were not allowed to use any more American scripts and uh, it must cease forthwith in Australia. So I went to uh, J. Walter Thompson, the, the advertising agency, and I said, look, I love playing Dagwood. Why can't we have an Australian family comedy situation? I said, we have to rewrite all these episodes anyway. We have to change uh, a lot of things from the American idiom and the American way of thinking to Australian. I said, I, I would like to write an Australian version. So I came up with a show which was originally called It's the Berries, which we couldn't use because there, I didn't know there was a comic strip on, on that title. So I finally called it Life with Dexter, and uh, I made it myself. That, that's why I own the show today, because it, uh, it was my package. I made it, uh, cast it, and produced it, and it still runs uh, here and there all over the place, uh, even today, because it... it uh, the only reason it stands up, it's like, yes, what, uh, in the fact that uh, it doesn't depend on the joke. It, it's purely uh, situations that people relate to. Uh, but but uh, I had a wonderful time. I had 10 years. It ran 10 years almost to the day with several sponsors. And... Uh, uh, but I, when I'm asked today, don't you miss the old days of radio, my answer is no. Because today, after radio playing Willie for about five years and then Dexter for ten years, I now never play the same man twice, really. Oh, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but uh, very rarely. And I love playing different people now all the time. The well, life with Dexter, I think, ran through till 1981, uh, Willie. Oh... Oh, Might have been reruns, perhaps. Could have been reruns. So they must have been uh, contemporary almost in those uh, in those days to have uh, got the, uh, you know, audience even then. Oh, yes. It was produced in the mid-50s. I did it for, uh, from the mid-50s to the mid-60s. Uh, but uh, it... Uh, yeah, 
Yes. Uh, what, what, what did you actually say? I was going to come back. I'm just trying to think. Uh, well, well, well I... you said yourself that the series ran 10 years, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, well coming more up to, to the present and having enjoyed, Willie, the golden years of radio, and there's no doubt that you are one of the giants of the industry in this country, but did you enjoy the transition to television? Was it just as easy for you? Well, uh, th that's a good question. Uh... I, I give my thanks to Dick Bentley. Would you have heard of Dick Bentley? Yes. Of course, yes. Take it from here and all that. Yeah, he's still, he's still alive in London at the moment. And when they did my life in This Is Your Life a few years ago, uh, Dick was very kind and spoke from London about working with me. But I walked through uh, uh, the, what's your park that has the Maya Music Bowl there. That's the uh, Alexandra Gardens? Yes, I walked through the gardens with Dick one day during lunch after a rehearsal. And he said, Willie... You've been in radio with us for 12 months. You've got a name uh, in Calling the Stars that has taken me 30 years to build up in the theatre. And he said, you're doing very well. You, your money's fine. I imagine you're living finally. And, uh, but if you don't mind me, I'm a little older than you. I'd like to give you a bit of advice. He said, get out of radio if you can at least twice a year and learn to move on the stage and learn to do other mediums. And many people fell by the wayside by not doing that, but I, I thank Dick today for that because I did. I went up and I did, uh, I went to Brisbane and did the Theatre Royal with George Wallace and George Wallace Jr. And I did uh, uh, Tivoli shows in Melbourne with uh, Chico Marx and with uh, uh, George Formby, Tommy Trinder. And uh, when the transition came, uh, doing variety, not, not straight acting like I do today so much, but more, very much variety characters. I had no trouble moving on stage, but people did, unfortunately, a lot of my good friends from early radio days missed out, but a lot of them are, are still great and, and were great, like your Neva Carr Glynn that was with me in uh, Life with Dexter and uh, Kevin Brennan, people like uh, Ray Hartley that had learned to move on the stage, but they're too entirely different techniques but now the transition I didn't do a lot in television when it first started I had a very lean period there until I uh, until Hayes Gordon gave me my first break in a straight play and from then on although I play many co comedy characters now in plays and in films and in things like country practice and uh, series and what have you uh, they've usually got a little comedy twist to them, even though they might be fairly straight. Willie, it's, it's Bruce again here. You worked for a little while on 3AW with my uncle. I, I have great memories of 3AW. Who was your uncle there? Terry Deer. Oh, God, love him, yes. In fact, uh, 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 Terry may have told you that we did the, uh, the test cricket broadcast together in Melbourne. I have a photo in my den at home of the whole cast under the 3AW banner, and there's you and people like Jack O'Hagan and, and Freddie Tupper. Kitty Blewett. Wouldn't yes, and you're there in your little uh, checked uh, uh, coat and the, and the hat with the brim back. Uh, do, you, do you know, Bruce, that we used to... Uh, uh, when one of us was on the microphone during that cricket, especially when the rains came and they said, over to you, be funny, uh, because we, started, we, you know, we were so short of material, uh, George Foster would go on air while I went out on the typewriter and wrote a few funny poems or bits and pieces to do. Then I came back on air and George went out and wrote some stuff for the next 10 minutes. And that's the way we got through that night. But uh, it went very big in Melbourne. But the photo shows you all, not you so much, Willie, but uh, my uncle and everyone else, all in, in formal gear with the, the butterfly collars of the lot. Oh, goodness. And, and what, what's Terry doing now? Oh, he's, uh, he's an old man. He's about 85, 86 now and not keeping the best of health, as I understand. Oh, is, he, is he living in Sydney? Living in Sydney, yeah. Oh, well, I must try and find out how to get in touch with him. He'd love to hear from you. And, of course, uh, Willie, it's Willie Fennell, our very special guest in this hour of Remember When. It was Ian Dougal of Truth who spoke to me about the fact that there were rumours that you'd passed on, but I, I think people were thinking of Hal Lashwood, who sadly passed away within the last two months. Well, uh, yes, I put it down to two things, either that or uh, just recently I went to Melbourne 
while I was doing this play in Brisbane to do two commercials, believe it or not, for a, a funeral parlour in Melbourne. Yes, we're running them on the station. <laughs> oh, roses or something. Yes. And they want to do some more. And they rang my agency and said, we, we, we're writing more commercials. So, well, what, is Willie gone? <laughs> and they said, no, no, no. I would not since last night because he appeared on stage last night. Well, now, before we say goodnight to you, and for Bruce and myself, this has been memorable, just tell us some of the people who surprised you on This Is Your Life, because I'm sure this will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, this will be a running list of some of the greats of Australian show business. Oh, well, on This Is Your Life, let me see. You see, they made, they, apart from bringing in wonderful radio people and what have you, they brought in some of my old army mates and from schools and everything. But Dick Bentley from London, uh, John McCallum spoke about us doing the early skippies together and doing a play together and uh, the, the, the early Boney series. Uh, Googie McCallum, uh, uh, Googie Withers, rather. Well, she is Googie McCallum. And... Uh, Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, uh, so many of them are gone, uh, but uh, mentions from Tommy Trinder and people, but uh, I think they had gone too at the time, but I, I can't remember them all. At the, I, I have a tape, but I haven't played it for years. Well, Willie, I think Phil has already just expressed how, uh, how grateful we are for you to give up your time on this Sunday night, and especially for me, because you're, uh, you've been so much part of my family growing up with uh, my uncle working with you and evoking so many memories with us tonight. Thanks, Bruce. And, and let me assure you, uh, the, the voice tonight is not old age. I've got a touch of bronchitis, and it's very rough. <laughs> you're sounding good, and you told a great story tonight, Willie. Well, Willie, you mightn't be feeling terrific, but how are you, mate? How are you, mate? Good night, Willie. Go ahead, Roo. <laughs>